What does this house have in common with this movie? Sorry, I don't want to get married. Terrific. That makes two of us. Will you unzip me? Sure. Stay tuned, we'll find out next. Thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Canucks Unlimited. You've probably guessed from the title of the episode and that last clip, the connection is between Sally Field and the Field House. If so, pat yourself on the back. But the question remains, what is the connection? To get to that connection, we have to go back to the American Revolutionary War, or as my family calls it, the Anglo-American Games of 1776. Hey, we finished in second place in that one. Back then, George Field was living in the rather posh-sounding but quite ordinary farming community of Dutchess County in the province of New York. That's when things started to get dicey for our hero. Next door in Massachusetts, there was a tea party. No, no, not that tea party. Okay, that's better. Anyway, he wasn't invited, but if he had been, he would have declined. George didn't like the idea of mob rule, and together with many of his neighbors, he decided to hitch his possessions to the Loyalist wagon, and with his sons Gilbert and Nathan, he proceeded to Fort Niagara, where the Niagara River meets Lake Ontario. Once there, they found other Loyalists from the Hudson and Mohawk Valleys in New York, who found refuge from the Patriot storm sweeping the colonies. And like many of the dispossessed refugees, they decided to return to the fight by joining Colonel Butler's Ranger Corps, aptly named Butler's Rangers. Now, if you are of an American persuasion and have read up on your Revolutionary War history, you've probably shrieked at the mention of Butler's Rangers, or possibly fainted. But I want to assure you that all the stories of them being a ruthless band of ruffians hell-bent on the destruction of the Patriots is probably all true. Just remember, one country's tyrant is another country's hero, and in Canada, Butler's Rangers are pretty much considered heroes, if not the founding fathers of what would become the province of Ontario. However, that is another story for another episode. Somehow, Gilbert survived the war and is listed as one of ten heads of household mentioned in the very first census taken in what would become the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake. Founding father, indeed. It was here that he met his wife, Eleanor Morden, in Niagara. She was a widow of a loyalist who was sadly executed by patriots for defending his own property. Gilbert and Eleanor, once their war claims had been processed, received over 400 acres of land from the Crown in the Niagara region. Gilbert built the field house on land that had been granted to his father, George, over a 10-year period, starting in 1785. When completed, it operated as an inn, and at the beginning of the War of 1812, it billeted British troops, most likely artillery officers and men who manned cannons directly across the road at Browns Point. After the invasion of the Niagara Peninsula in 1813, the house was taken over by the United States Army, who used it as a barracks and later as a field hospital. It was damaged by artillery and small arms fire by both sides in the conflict, as the front lines seesawed through the area. After the war, the Fields family was awarded damages by the British government. The Fields held on to the property until 1925. In 1968, it was acquired by the Ontario Heritage Foundation, who restored it to resemble its original design. Sold to private owners in 1980, it has been classified as a historic building under the Ontario Heritage Act. As a private residence, it is no longer open to the public. So, what is the connection to Sally Field? Gilbert Field is her fourth great-grandfather. Her great-grandfather, John Quincy Field, was born in the town of Grimsby, Ontario, some 50 kilometers away from the Field House. This was revealed in the PBS show, Finding Your Roots. Adam Field, John Morden Field, and Gilbert Field. Did you ever imagine that your family's history went so far, so deeply back into Canada? Does that mean I get something good if I go to Canada? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it does. Let's tell her what she's won. Now, to start off, unfortunately, you're not eligible to join the Daughters of the American Revolution, but you get something better. As a descendant of a loyalist, you are entitled to use the British honorific title of United Empire Loyalist. The title was bestowed by Sir Guy Carleton, 1st Baron Dorchester, upon American loyalists who resettled in British North America. Arise, Sally Field, U.E. 
So that brings us to the end of another episode of Canucks Unlimited. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be working on another video starting tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get that out next week. Now, what you're seeing behind you is content from future episodes. Why might you ask? Well, I've been doing research for a future video. The office is a mess, and I'd rather get this video out to you than clean my room. And it's time for question of the week. Have you done your family genealogy? If so, did you find any surprises or was it all pretty much what you expected? So you've done this enough times, you know the drill. Give us a like. And if you want future notifications, subscribe and ring that bell. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support us, keep me off the streets and keep the cats and the dog fed, consider joining us at Patreon. The links are below in the description. And that pretty much wraps things up for this episode of Canucks Unlimited. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.